Here we go. Hello and welcome to a Bergkamp Wonderland podcast. We are an Arsenal podcast. Yes, indeed we are. That has never changed, dear listener, and I doubt it will ever change in the future, unless, of course, Josh and Stokes have anything to do with it. Danny knows what I mean. Uh, so let's make this uh, waste no no more time. Let's introduce Danny because he's here. So, uh, hi, Danny. How are you? Hiya, chicken. I'm good. Uh, that was that. There was no need for that, was there? That was. That's, that's what Northerners say to each other when the offspring is working. There, they go, "Hiya, chicken. Yeah, that. Yeah, chicken. Yeah, that chick. Hi. Well, it's yes. good to see your uh, lovable hairy face. New lighting as well yes and for the people at home you won't be able to see this but if i do this and go boop, 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 then all my lights are flashing in, in i feel like we should have voice. issued a warning before you did that for like anybody who's is it epileptic or the, the yeah, worst? well yeah. just sensitive to shit sounds really i won't ask you how you are because i'm going to leave that to our, our special guests who ask you how you are otherwise you'll be asked twice absolutely yes uh, let's introduce him he is the man the myth, the legend. No, he's definitely not a myth. He is certainly a legend. Uh, it's been a while, Mr. Jeff Arsenal. How are you doing, Jeff? Christopher, yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Uh, like I said, like to say, I've got air in the lungs. That's the main thing um, yes. <laughs> at the moment. So, yeah, really, really good. It's been a long while since I've been on again. I've uh, been tapped up all over the place. People trying to get me on for different podcasts, but Dan's the man. You know, you know he's my man, so I thought we'd... we'd we go back on the ABW before anything else, you know. Amen. I'm under so contract he... tonight, Dan. What have I got? 13 packets of custard creams a week, isn't it? You've, well, now that we don't make money anymore, we've actually officially bankrupt, but we just keep going. We just don't pay don't pay the bills. We'll be fine. Just ignore all the letters. Superb. <laughs> have you been, Chris? You all right? I see you doing I've... all running. Yeah, I've been good, Jeff. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still cracking on injured at the moment, but, you know, we're, uh, we're working our way back up to, to things. Some nice country walks recently, but I'm, I'm all right, mate. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Beautiful. And, uh, and good, very good to hear your voice again. It's been, been way too long. And Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure. There's a few things I, I definitely want to ask you, and I'm sure the listeners want to ask you as well. So um, we'll, we'll delve into those in a short while. So uh, what we thought we would do, dear listener, tonight is because we're kind of kicking it old school. Me, Danny and Jeff, it's like the old days. So um, we haven't really got a, a set schedule, a set menu, if you will. So we're just going to visit the tapas bar a little bit and take a bit from every uh, every trough of food that we're uh, we're able to serve up. So... We'll start with Burnley, Burnley and um, we'll talk about that particular game. Danny, were you in bed for this one? I don't know. It's a daytime game, so I'm guessing you probably were. But have you had a chance to catch up on it? And what was your feelings, I guess? It's a second consecutive 1-0 win in the Premier League. I wasn't convinced, but obviously I was happy. Do you fall on the same kind of lines of that? Or did you were you particularly unhappy or did you expect more? I actually got up and watched it. I got up at two o'clock that day. It was uh, right. it was quite scary, but I'm still used to being getting up early in the summer. But I didn't. I thought it's going to be a tough game because we have a history of going there, and they are the modern day Wimbledon or um, Oldham Stoke. They're the empty Stoke. It sort of flies back up there. God. Um, so I didn't really expect much. I thought I'd maybe I'd be happy if we get a, a draw there, and uh, we had. Uh, Nice to see that we're still creating chances to score goals, but we scored two Premier League goals this season. One was a scramble, one was a free kick. So I am still a little bit concerned about the fact that we're not really putting away the chances that we're getting. And luckily, it's been against Norwich and it's been against Burnley, who aren't really um, high-scoring teams, as we see Norwich are at the bottom of the Premier League. And they look like they're ready applying for a reapplication to the Championship because that's where they're going to end up going. But it is a, it is a little bit worrying. Uh, I don't want to see people moaning about Saka because Saka is barely out of nappy, still going through puberty. And he uh, people are already going, oh, he's having a shit game. Well, of course he's having a shit game. He's, he's, he's only played a handful of games and Smith Rowe. I wouldn't care if they spend the entire season and don't really do much because they, they've done enough in the past to show they've got it. But you know what Arsenal fans are like? They're always moaning and groaning that everything's not good enough. Um Party was good. Good to see him coming back. That's an important part of the game. But the thing I suppose that I was most impressed with it was Ramsdale. Absolutely brilliant. He's, I no longer have a panic attack when we are passing the ball back. It's almost like he goes, 
He's shouting and screaming, I'll have the ball, I'll pass it out, whether he's rolling it, throwing it, kicking it or passing it. Every single thing that he does with that ball is brilliant and it is such a relief. I didn't even think about it until I thought, hold on, that makes no sense, does it? I wasn't worried about it and then I thought, hold on, I'm not worried about the back part paying out from the back. Ramsdale's in goal and I'm not worried about when crosses come in because Ramsdale's in goal. He's not going to try and punch it. He's going to catch it. He's going to drop to the floor and, and hold on to it. And Gabriel and White have got a really good partnership. Gabriel is the one going in there with the elbows and the tough tackling. White is the one doing the David Luiz, bringing it out of defence. Tommy Ashu at right back looks absolutely brilliant. Uh, considering I've never, the, the only time I'd ever seen him play was when I did the usual YouTube highlights. And then I thought, he looks bloody good. And Tierney's been quiet, but much like Saka and uh, Smith Rowe, when you've been carrying Arsenal for the last 18 months, it's going to take you a while to get your, get your form back, isn't it? But I was really happy with it. Absolutely. Yeah, well said. And, and listeners, if you can hear a noise in the background uh, like that, that is the sound of Danny flicking elastic bands at a fly on the roof of his house. Just, just so there's some context for those of you who can't see it's what we can mirror. see. Is it too loud? I'm going to mute myself while I try and kill it. Always, always a professional. So while Danny deals with that, uh, Jeff, let me let me come to you. Chris. Um, <laughs> let's bring some sanity back, Jeff. What, what do you? We'll, we'll probably Bro, save the. <laughs> well done. We'll say we'll save the. What do you think of the current Arsenal for an open table discussion later on? But just looking at this Burnley game as a whole. Yeah. Which side of the fence do you fall on? Do you fall on the side of the fence of it's a tough place to go? We did there, we got out, we got the job done. Or do you slightly fall on the side of the fence that I do where I look at it and I go, OK, yeah, Burnley, it is a bit of a rough place to go. You know, the pitch isn't grey, Sean Dyche, cluggers, etc. and so on. But they haven't had a great record against us at Turf Moor. No. They've had an awful start to the season, and I felt we should have gone there and won. How do you? Which sort of side of the fence do you fall on having watched what you did on Saturday? Well, well ultimately, it's all about the three points. But like you, Chris, I do. I, I watch the game, and I, I like to see what, what, what progress that we may have made from the first three games that we've, we've encountered at the start of the season. Um, I, I think it's, it's really tricky, isn't it? I think Danny was looking for the, 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 the uh, a team like Bolton, who we used to yeah. play. There was a, a, a similar type of game, but we've got a fantastic record at Burnley, whereas Bolton, we, we wasn't. We, we, we'd been beat there a few times in vital games as well. Uh, but, but Burnley, uh, they are a difficult opposition. Uh, nobody likes to go there because they leave the grass long against footballing-type teams. Uh, they're cloggers. They're up and at you. They're very, very fit, and you don't you don't normally get much time to play. But I think they give us a little bit of time to play at the weekend. The first first twenty minutes at least. Um, but you know, I I mean, I, 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 I I'm not sure about Mikel's tactics. I, I I just wish I understood him better because he just seems to. I mean, you know, I'm. We've been, we've had twenty odd years of Wenger, and you know those uh, the type of teams where swashbuckling and just going to outscore teams. But it seems different under uh, Mikel, um, and he seems to after uh, when we when we break the ball down, we've got possession of the ball. He seems to want to the other side, the op, the opponents to, to reset, get everyone behind the ball, and we'll try and work our way round them or through them. And it does become very, very laborious to watch, um, and that's that's my problem. And I think that is how the game went. It was all right. We was you could say we was in control of the game, uh, which we mainly was. We didn't have many scares. Uh, all right, and people say we had a lot of shots on goal, but them shots on goal, you know, you know, are they on target? And are they really? Are you really going to get you know a goal, or was it just sometimes we? What worries me with with Arsenal, we're we're passing the ball about quite aimlessly, if you get what I mean. There's no, we're not, we're just passing it for the sake of passing it. Um, I'd like, I'd like, I'd like, you know, midfield players to 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 be on the half turn all the time. And if there's if there's if, you, if there's a little way, little bit of room there where you could you could turn on the ball and and go forward like we used to do in the old days, I would like that. Whereas we, we you know. Mikel, he seems to be doing a hell of a lot of coaching on the side. Sometimes I look at the games and I wish he'd shut up. You see him, well, you, you see because you see him on the side. He's more or less playing the game for these players. 
mm-hmm. um, let them, you know, you've got your, you, you've got your structure, but you've got to have confidence in these players. So let them go out and play the game. You know, they're quality players. So they won't be at Arsenal Football Club. Let them play. And when he's on the sidelines all the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, he's, he's almost, you can see him. He's on, he's pointing and he's, he's literally playing the game for them. Right. It, when it, Sometimes I'm sure the players want to say, "Listen, shut up, right? Let me just play my game and let me let, let the hand break off a little bit, you know." Mm. And, but as the game went on, then we started to. I, I'm worried about the fitness as well. We don't we don't seem like we're as fit as what we have been the last few years. They reckon we, we we've done a lot more training. But I, I really don't know. Who's that? The motorbike man, Dan? Yeah, that's <laughs> my what's end. That, what's that? A delivery road just gone flying past you? I live in a cul de sac, don't have noises here. I, I, I live on a main road. It's just I, wonder like... could, I wonder if he can play right midfield. You want to get him in, the kid? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so, but as the game went on, we was kind of like hanging on again, wasn't we? You know, mm. uh, yeah, I know there wasn't any clear cut chances, but we was hanging on again. I just thought it might have been one of those games where here we go again, you know. And the opposition to go and score rather than, you know, play play the game in their half of the football pitch because you've got more chance of, of, of scoring goals up their end of the pitch than you are down at ours, Chris. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. The the um, <laughs> I don't know if you've heard the most recent episode of the uh, the Tuesday Club, but their um, the title of their last podcast was uh, "Stop yeah. Talking to Them, You Prick," <laughs> which was in reference to <laughs> one of the fans who was, who was shouting that at the cows. Like, do, do, do you understand what I mean, though? Don't you? You can yeah, see yeah. you can see that he's, he's he's on the line, and I'm I'm sure he's he's doing it for for you know the best reasons. But sometimes these players, you've got to let them go out and play football rather than keep keep telling them what to do every single... I mean, mm. you, you know, Wenger, he didn't used to say nothing and he got a lot of stick for that. Yeah. But he would. He had to have confidence, he'd have confidence in the players, right? He'd, have, he'd do all the chatting beforehand, set them up, right? He most really said, just go out there and score more goals than the others, you know? Play, yeah. <laughs> there weren't a lot about it. And, and sometimes we did get thumped, but we... we um, We've got a lot of it's, it's, it's a strategy at Arsenal now, and obviously the players are trying to get. You know, it's going to take a little bit of time. I remember Pep when he went to Man City; it changed a little bit. I know that, but they had just they had better players at the time. But it still took them eighteen months before they really, really, really got into into good speed with it. And I think Mikel is trying to do that with us, and it's going to take a long while for everyone to to, to buy into it. You know what I mean? Yeah, he strikes me as a sort of manager that if he managed, if you were an office worker and he was your manager, you would you'd hate going to work. He just just strikes me as that guy who would just micromanage the hell out of every little detail, you know, up to like you go into the water cooler, but it's taking you twenty steps. Well, maybe if you filled the uh, filled your, your jug up twice, you would only have to take half those steps, and you'd be more product, you'd be more productive in your day. It just strikes me as one of those. But you know, it's a bit weird, Chris. It's not like he's is Zidane, is it? Uh, some of the Arsenal players must go. Hold on, Governor, you you've won one FA Cup and the rest of your you didn't even play for your country. Why are you telling us what to do? I'm more yeah. skillful now than you have been for your entire career. You're not no. Zidane. Zidane, Dan. shut up. Then I said I I, I retweet, well, you retweeted the clip uh, earlier on in the week when um, he was taking part in the training session. Uh, I don't know whether you've seen it at all. Um, where you know that you've got two guys in the middle, or two or three guys in the middle, and they're passing the ball around, like they do the warm ups and all that, uh, uh, you know, before games. And he was off the wall. His touch, right, his passing, his skill, right, was up there with all them players that he was playing against. And, uh, he's probably still better than Chaka and and El mate. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, really? he's still got it. I wouldn't. I never really had Arteta. I know when he was at Everton, he was there for their their kind of number ten, setting stuff up, creating stuff. And then when he came to us, he he, he moved back into defensive midfield because we never replaced Gilberto. Um, mm. But I wouldn't never have, have had uh, Arteta down as anything really overly skillful. There again, he did play for some big clubs, didn't he? Yeah, well, he, and don't forget, he came through La Masia, so yeah. I mean, he's he's got that technical element exactly. to his to his game. Um, just sticking with you for a minute, Jeff. The Danny made the point about Aaron Ramsdale. Um, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kind of um, say that I wasn't critical of the signing because I would be a massive liar, and my tweets are still there if people want to pick them up. I, my my main criticism of that deal was just how much we were paying for what I deemed at the time to be a second choice goalkeeper. 
Um, to Mikel's credit, it seems that he's made the choice. I mean, we don't know what keeper he's going to select on Sunday, and that will cause some issue if he reverts back to Leno. But the fact that Leno played last night suggests to me that Ramsdale will stay in goal. Mm. He 24 million quid is a lot of money, but that's not Ramsdale's choice. The one thing, well, one thing, the two things I think he's brought to this team, as Danny said, is security and and personality. He's um, you know he's a He's a personality both on and off the pitch. You can tell he's enjoying his football, but he seems to bring a calmness to the defence around him and a, a protective side. That picture that went round of the week where he sort of stood over, I think it was, was it McNeil or someone who was holding back as Tierney was down. He just strikes me as a guy who's got presence about him, which I've never really felt Leno had. What do you make of that deal? And, and be honest, when we signed him, were you kind of same as me thinking, why on earth are we shelling out? best part of 25 million on a keeper who, you know, might not even be first choice. Well, the thing is, you know, everyone obviously compares him to Martinez, don't they? They put the two yeah. of them together and say, ah, when we got rid of Martinez for 20 mil, why are we paying 20 odd mil for, for, for Ramsdale? You know what? I was just, I was, I was pleased in the end that we got a, a decent backup stroke, first choice goalkeeper uh, because we would have been in, would have been up, uh, a creek without a paddle, mate. If we, we had it, yeah. you know what I mean. So that that was the first thing. Uh, I always like to give these players time to bed in before I make a proper opinion of them, because it's all well and good having a honeymoon period where, you know, uh, you know what it's like. If you if any if you played football, you're all you're trying your hardest all the time when you first join or you first playing for a new club or whatever, but. Um, once, once the honeymoon period's over, and you, you, you know, you maybe a couple of mistakes of or a couple of easy goals have gone in, you, you've dented your confidence. Um, then you will see uh, whether or not they're, they're man enough for the job. I, I think he's a decent goalkeeper. I've not seen a great deal of him, but what I've seen is that he's, a, he's, he's very organised. Um, I love it the way he comes out and claims claims the ball from corners. I mean, that is such. It's, it's, it's so good for a, for a, a defensive uh, view of, you know, when when you're under pressure, like we have been under pressure a few times. Um, when he comes, he just claims the ball out of the air and, and, and you know, gives you a little bit of time to think about what you're going to do next, calms the game down. But, you know, overall, at the moment, I've got no complaints of him. You know, he's very, he's very vocal. Uh, he seems, like, like Danny said, he seems like he's uh, enjoying it. He's obviously come to a big club. Uh, he doesn't seem overawed at all by coming to such a big club. You know, he's he's grabbed it with both hands, pardon the pun. <laughs> and uh, and let's hope he can, uh, you know, it, I mean, what's he had? Two or three clean sheets now? I'm not sure. Yeah, two in a row, yeah. yeah. Well, I think actually it's three in a row. I think he's played the League Cup game before, yeah. You know, so, four three out, oh, yeah, three, three out of three. Yeah, yeah. West Brom, Norwich and Burnley. That's it. Yeah, West Brom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's not a bad start. Got great confidence, and uh, he's decent on the ball. I, I've not seen enough of him to, to see how good he is on the ball, but he looks decent. He, he's very confident on the ball, um, and and he looks like he gives um, the, the defenders a bit more confidence rather than mm. Leno. Leno wasn't very vocal, and the you know he didn't fill me with confidence. Leno, yeah. another one, a good shot stopper, but he didn't fill me with confidence on the ball. Every time the ball went back to him, it was like, oh my god. You know, because yeah. you knew there was, there was a ricket in him, wasn't there? Which was ironic because I remember when Petr Cech had his his moments with uh, when we were first trying to integrate him into the uh, that style of play, and I still remember that Leverkusen tweet that upset Cech at the time. Was it saying, "Oh, we've heard you want a keeper who can play out from the back. We we, we can recommend you someone." And it was that sort of image of Leno <laughs> yeah. dribbling yeah. out in the Bundesliga, and and yet now he seems to have gone completely the opposite way. Yeah. It's not. We're not setting fire to Leno, but I think there's two things at play in this one. One is that this is a goalkeeper who's made it very abundantly clear that he doesn't want to sign a new contract. So, you know, he shouldn't be playing. End of story. I don't care how good you are. If you've made it clear you don't want to be here, then you can move on. That's that's fine by me. And I think that's good management. And then the other angle of it, of your, you know, you, you've had a, a tough first three games of the season where your defence has looked pretty ropey. Um I know this isn't a popular view, but I thought Leno was at fault for the Brentford goal from that throw-in. I don't think he was strong enough in that position. 100%. Um, 
and and you know when you're not playing well at a club of our size you, you should be dropped and I think yeah Leno is a, he's a very capable goalkeeper he's a German international but I agree with you Jeff I think there's a a slight element of he makes the spectacular saves that he hasn't really got any right to save but which is all well and good but I kind of want my goalkeeper to just do the basics well and then Spot. only be rely relied upon when it you know when he's last line of defence. That's when you pull out the spectacular. So um, even that, if that Brentford game, I was at that Brentford game as well, and um, yeah. he got beat on his near post, and it was I was wondering, so well, you got to get down to that. Yeah, you know, I agree. You, you got you got to get down to that. Uh, but you know, it, it, it's going to be interesting now to see. It does it does feel like that Arteta has stuck Ramsdale in as a number yeah. one. And uh, Leno's going to have to fight for his place back. See, see what happens now, won't we? Yeah, I was just looking yeah. at last season for Leno in the Premier League. He had five clean sheets out of six games at one point. They had clean sheets: uh, one nil at Brighton, four nil at West Brom, nil nil at home to Palace, three nil at home to Newcastle. Then let one in in the three one away at Southampton. We won, and then nil nil at home to Man United. So. Well, West Brom and Newcastle don't count. Let's put that out there straight away. <laughs> um, I mean, you could have been in goal for those two, Danny. To be yeah, fair, true. but yeah, I mean, I say we're not we're not saying he's a bad keeper. I just I, I'm I'm more on the lines of again, if you spend twenty four odd million quid on a goalkeeper, you play him. Like that's just what you do. And and if Leno if Leno had made it clear he wanted to stay, and let's not forget as well, and this is probably where I would be slightly raised eyebrow at Leno. The whole reason we sold Martinez was because Arteta wanted to back Leno. You know, but is Martinez better than Ramsdale? That's that's the thing we should really ask. I I think it's way too early to judge that. Martinez has had a full season at Villa, hasn't he? So, you know, I think to be like fair, said, it's, see how to, Ramsdale responds to it. To, to, to be mistake. fair with Leno, though, he did have um, Mustafi and, and Socrates in front of him a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. Fair point. Yeah, yeah. Fair is he point. paying you to point that out? <laughs> that's um that's my next question danny um mm. defensively do you think it's any coincidence that the um the the fantastically uh Liga, uh crafted gabrielle is coming back into the side from uh clearly the best league in europe um uh, giggity the fact gabrielle's come back into this Not team quite. It just makes us look infinitely more secure, doesn't it? The partnership with him and Ben White it seems to complement each other well. You've got Tommy Asu, who's, you know, even though I still stand by the idea that I prefer him at centre back, he's a he's a proper defender. He's not a, a right back who's going to um, overlap particularly, although he has marauded forward a bit. He's a proper defender. Tierney, you know what you're going to get eight or nine out of ten every week. But that Gabrielle White partnership, that's going to be crucial, isn't it? Because they're the beauty and the beast almost of that central defence. Yeah, very true indeed. I do. I mean, uh, Tommy Ashu is six foot two and he is an absolute beast. You, you're not going to want to mess with him. Gabriel, as we know, he's, he's, uh, he's Brazilian and Brazilian defenders are, are rugged players. Ben White is this, the. If you want to say he's the classy one, he's the seaside Mustafi, as someone will I love that saying. But he does look composed. He's, his job isn't to remember all, all the days back at Arsenal, you had one defender that would clear and you'd have one that would go forward. And the one that would create stuff, bring it the ball out, would usually be Sol Campbell. And then you'd have Tony Adams staying back or Colo Torre or whichever one played at the time. And then, so that's what we've got at the moment. We've got one who can get the ball and play it out. And we've got one that can that can clear up. Plus, yeah, we've got Tommy who can move across from right back and cover. Tierney does it for Scotland because Scotland play a back three and he he plays on, on the, the left side of the centre-back. I think the only thing missing from our defence at the moment is a bit of form from um, uh, from Tierney. Because he has not showed much form this season, apart from the first couple of games where we got about 100 crosses in per game and there was nobody there to put it in. But that when when he starts to gel with them, uh, then that is a very formidable defence. Again, one of the most expensive defences in the Premier League, not on weekly wages, but when you look at the overall cost of it all. Um, but I just wanted to say that I moaned about Ramsdale because I wanted it in the order of attacking midfielder, then a right back, and then a goalkeeper. I don't care who you, how much they cost, but that was the yeah. order. So when you went and bought the goalkeeper, I was moaning a lot on Twitter saying, why are we getting this bloke? Why we don't need him? Well, we don't really need him. But he's, he's a better goalkeeper for me than Leno. But it was the order. One, if you'd got Odegaard first and then you'd have got Tommy, I wouldn't have cared about how much you paid for him. But but that back five, once they start gelling, they are, they are I mean, we've already seen three clean sheets that we've had in the last few games with, with some of them in and some of them out. It's looking really good. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a very, very good, uh, very good summation of that. And and then 
as far as the other other end of the pitch, Jeff, the the Odegaard signing, I I, I genuinely don't think we realise how good a deal we've got there. I do think he's a a really classy player, and I think I think given. When I say time to settle, I mean he's obviously settled with his loan spell last year. But I think when he hits really top form and and the the forwards in front of him start firing, I, I think he's going to be a big difference for us in that creative role. Do you have those concerns though in that in that mi- midfield and attacking role and and even with the centre forwards? I mean, Aubameyang looked looked sharp as, as as anything in that that cup game. But again, we have to take into consideration the opposition and everything that went with it. Is it a case that you think Alba just needs a goal or are you a bit worried about his supply line behind it? Because we, as you touched on earlier, we do still look a little bit um, cautious, I think I'm going to use the word. Yeah, 100%. I mean, uh, it gets a lot of stick up, Amir. Yeah? But I think if you if you give him enough service, he'll score you goals. He's, he's, a, he's, still, he's still got pace. You see, you've seen it. Plenty of times over the last three or four games, he's not finished, and he it will always score a goal, right? But you've got to get the ball. In, he's got to get in proper, get the ball in proper position so he can get a chance to score a goal. Or uh, you know, you've got to play to his strengths if you want goals out of him. And I, I don't think that we're we, we've not we've not utilised him the best way we can at the moment. We haven't got the the service hasn't been good enough for him, you know, and we've got to find a way over the course of the time, over the next six months where we, we, we've got to bring him in a lot more and, and give him a chance, get him inside that penalty area where he can he, he have plenty of shots on goal because he will score. There's no doubt about it. He's a top, top class. You know, he's a goal scorer. No doubt about it. But I do worry about, I do worry about, um, the, the, the build up and stuff like that it, it's very very laborious I've, I've spoken about that reset that he, he seems to he, I mean you must have noticed, you noticed it yourself Chris maybe it's the, the style of football that, that the world has undertaken now uh, where they try and reset and you let everybody get behind it. I mean, I don't really understand that. It's very difficult for me to understand it because we'd get in we'd, we'd, uh, we'd turn the football over halfway up the pitch and you'd think that Whoever's turned it over is 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 going to go forward with the ball, but they don't. They turn around and look to play it back to the, one of the fullbacks or wingbacks or whoever to let everybody, all the opposition, get into into in, set again, and then we, we go again. And um, I, I really don't understand it. And that, I think I think Aubameyang, you can see his frustration. You can see his frustration on the pitch sometimes, thinking, "Well, you know, I'm I'm not going to get many chances here," uh, and I think he's one of those players that needs plenty of chances to score to score plenty of goals. You know, it's yeah. just a bit tricky, isn't it? Yeah, it's finding more the right... up for it though. Oh, go on. I was going to say no, no, he, had, he, he does. He, I was going to ask you, Chris. He does look more up for it this season. Uh, apart from the Man City and Chelsea games, which the two best teams in the league, you're going to struggle. But he has looked significantly more up for it more involved more eager to do stuff hasn't he yeah i i i'm i'm sort of on the fence with with elba because i uh, as a player i think like jess said like he, he's always going to score goals i think my only sort of slight concern with Albert, he, he had a lot of mitigating factors last year which meant he didn't have his best season like the covid the malaria you yeah. know the the lockdown and, and i think i do think that people forget somebody i can't remember who it was but somebody made this point on a podcast a while ago and they were saying that you get the best out of Aubameyang when he's got people to play for in terms of like a supporter base. You know, he thrives on, on the crowd. He thrives on the pageantry. He's a showman. You know, you only have to look at his appearance, the cars he drives, you know, and that's not a criticism. He's, he's an extrovert. He's a player who thrives on that. You take all that away. Um, you know, and it, and it's like, it's, it's taking the music away from Elvis. It's the expression I'd use. Like they might be a flamboyant character, but if there's no, hit single and there's no crowds to, to adorn them, then who who cares? Like who knows they're even there. So I think he's um I think he's a player who will come good. And I, I have a suspicion actually that he might he might have a, a really good day on Sunday. I hope so. Um and that will kickstart him in. But although the opposition was poor standard, the West Brom game, what that showed me is exactly what Jeff said there. The pace is still there. That was my one concern. I looked at it and I thought, mm, he's had these these illnesses. He's he's never been an injury prone player. He's been consistently fit for his time in France and in Germany and now in England. He's always been a, a player who's, who's who's not had injuries for long. And I just thought, oh, are, are we seeing a player who's got a new contract and has has given up? And I thought I didn't really ever buy into that because he strikes me as a player who wants to play football. But I did think 
are we seeing a player who may be in decline? And let's, again, not being unfair too much here, but let's not forget his own manager didn't exactly help by coming out in the public press and saying he might be in decline. It's, it's not really what you want to hear as a star striker, hear your manager say about you. So I feel like he's got a bit of a point point to prove. And and he just he just needs that sort of run of games where he gets a couple of goals and the the old in off your ass type of situation. Um, I, I do I do think he'll he'll be back to his his good form, but he, as Jeff quite rightly said, he's a striker who needs service, uh, and more than many strikers, he's not the sort of guy who's going to pick the ball up, you know, and 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 sort of race through four or five defenders. He's not the sort of player who's going to necessarily be on the end of a, a you know a deep cross with a bullet header. That's not his style of play. He's a player who plays on the shoulder, you know, Henri style cuts in from the left or the right and and is spontaneous. Uh, and I don't think, and he's not even really, I don't think he's really a poacher, contrary to that goal with the goal against Norwich. But I don't know. I just I just sort of feel like he he's he's ready to come back to his best, but some, we have to play to his strengths. Would you like a, a little tickle on some XG? I don't like XG, but I think it, it does It'll show make, some insight. It'll make Josh's uh, little testicles. Oh, this, this is far away on Josh if he's if he's not <laughs> if he's not naked in a bath of custard watching the Great British Bake Off highlights. Oh, God, there's uh, an image. Two se- three seasons ago, or his, his first season Arsenal, he's got his XG, which means expected goals. I thought they worked this out before the game. Apparently, it's after the game. How many goals they expected him to get? 0.77. See next season, 0.67. Then 0.45, then 0.41. You think that's that's a trend of going down already this season? He's up to 0.47, so that's mm. better than it was two years ago. His assists have gone 0. 0.10, 0. 0.14, 0. 0.08, 0. 0.11. Now they're up to 0. 0.18, which is the highest he's had in his entire time at Arsenal. And then they do this thing where they combine it all. So his form is showing already. But when you consider you've played Chelsea and Man, and, uh, Man City, to be his, for his XG and his XA and all these other stats, that I have no idea what they mean, to show an upward curve when you've played the two toughest team teams in the league is pretty yeah. good. And considering we, we've not really been scoring goals. So it shows for me that he's if it's expected goals, that it means he's putting himself in positions to score goals. Yeah, yeah, and and there's a reason why big clubs were still interested in him even at his age. I mean, make no mistake about it. If Barcelona hadn't have been such an absolute car crash of a club, and they'd have had some expendable cash, they would have gone for him in 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 the January of the lockdown or at the end of this season. They would 100 percent gone for him, and I think he probably would have been quite keen on that move. So it's it's a it's sort of a vic- we're we're a, a victim of fate, if you will. Um, but we. Whatever, whatever you think of him as a person, as a personality, as a consistent performer, regardless, he did basically carry us for half a season. He carried us to that FA Cup win, and he is the captain. Whether you, I don't personally agree with it, but whether you like it or not, he is. And and the manager put his head on the line to pay him three hundred thousand a week or whatever he's on. If you if you invest that much in a player, you you have to you have to back that decision and support the player essentially. Um, but we will um, we'll, we'll briefly touch on the Wimbledon game because uh, I, I want to sort of keep the bulk of this podcast to look ahead to Sunday's game and also answer some questions because there's a few things I want to ask Jeff as well. But um, the Wimbledon game, uh, Jeff, I'll start with you. First and foremost, obviously nobody saw the game, so uh, you know nothing to see here. But we, we've all seen the goals now. Good, good for for Lacazette to get on the score sheet. He spoke after the game of of wanting to give back to the fans. Um, he's had sort of a tough start, tough start to the season, not had much game time, and, and he, he did speak of the atmosphere being good. And we saw Eddie Nketi score a, a lovely goal, which will only increase his value, although maybe his wages are still going to be an issue if he wants to move on. And we saw Emma Smith Rowe score, which is always a bonus. Is it just a case of, you know, job done? Because we did toil, didn't we, for for a long period of time, despite having a pretty strong eleven. Yeah, I, I was quite surprised that the the eleven that he's put out of there against a team that's like two leagues below us. But you know, there's always a banana skin. Wimbledon, uh, they've gone there. It's like their it's like their cup final, isn't it? You know, you can imagine mm. again, their players their players are all fired up for it. So we we could have slipped up, but the boys they went out there with a with a proper attitude. I gather, like you say, nobody's seen it. Great, and that that is, is, is unbelievable. I, I can't remember ever not see. I mean, for many many years anyway, not mm. being able to see uh, an Arsenal game on TV or a stream somewhere 
I had um, 4,950 channels, oh, seriously, on yeah. my IPTV, and it was not on one of them. It, no. just, it just goes to show, though, how far we've dropped down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are the sea of the football world. We used, to, we, yeah. used to be, we used to be first on all the time, and now... <laughs> No, it's um, we, we, we're struggling to even get on, and everybody <laughs> else seemed to be on last night apart from Arsenal. Their game, you know, so it's tricky. But I mean, talking about that, the commercial department now, I know there's all different contracts and everything else that you've, you've got to negotiate first, but surely, even if it was a, a, a contractual thing with Carabao and the EFL, how on earth they didn't negotiate to even at the last minute, like two days before, I said, right, listen, we'll stream it live from our website. We charge everyone a fiver and we'll bust up the profit or give the profit mm. a charity or whatever. Because you would have, they'd have got loads of streams last night, loads and loads of streams, you know, thousands and thousands of streams because you see, you see how it was kicking off on Twitter about it, uh, people not being able to see the game, which it, I've not, I've, it's not, it, I don't know how long it is since I've been in that position where we couldn't we couldn't see the game. I was relying on the, uh, the, the Arsenal player commentary, you know, apart from the lad that was streaming from the, <laughs> from the, from the East End, bless him, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but the game itself, like I said, I've not seen it, but for what I'm hearing, you know, they went out there, they got the job done. Um, a couple of decent goals. Eddie Nketiah's goal looked brilliant. You know, that's a. It's and Eddie's a funny one because he is. Um, he's. I, I was at that Norwich game a few years ago when he burst onto the scene. We was one 0 down. He, he's come on and he and he, he rescued the game and scored the winner. Um, and, and ever since then, he, he's got he's got his little games here and there he's done okay but you know to play center forward for a team like arsenal and, and get a regular spot you you're gonna have to be a, a, a like a top top player you're gonna have to call it because we should be up there in the in the top five top six or whatever at least um so eddie he's a funny one he looked he had a, he had a good pre-season from what mm -hmm. I, I saw he looked really really sharp then he got injured didn't he uh, did he get injured or sent off or both or something? He's injured, yeah. Yeah, injured. yeah, he's missing. And, uh, yeah. Now he's come back. Now uh, he looked okay last night. He looked sharp. Fantastic goal, uh, off the cuff. You know, he, he more or less generated that himself, really, because he was he was a long way away from the goal, really, mm -hmm. uh, and it was behind in the pass. The flick was brilliant, um, like Carno. Back yeah. in the day, Gates Middlesbrough, like, 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 Stadium. Yeah, that's right. Like the great, the great Canovian. Um, yeah. So, he, but he's a funny one. He's a funny one. What do you do with any Niketia? You know, do you take, do you take twenty million pound for, for for him and and you know invest that into another person, Chris? What do you reckon? Well, my my issue with with Eddie Jeff is it's not even with Eddie himself because I. There's there's a lot of talk that he he uh, he talked his way out of the move to Palace. The fee was agreed, and he wanted high wages. Now, if I'm Eddie Nketiah, I'm yeah, sure, maybe he did get a, a bit greedy. I mean, he's you know he's a young guy. Who knows how he was advised? I don't really have an issue with with that. It's clear that the club were were looking to shift him. My main issue with, with Eddie Nketiah is is how it affects Fuller and Balogun, because you you've invested you you've they both got the same agent. You've given Balogun a new contract, but you haven't extended Eddie's. And you've you've put yourself in a position now where if you said to Eddie Nketiah, you are going to be our third choice striker for this season. You know, um, whatever happens, if if Lacazette's injured, you're you're next in, in line to Alba. And if I was injured, you're you know, you're level with Lacazette for the opportunities. That's fine. Because then what you do is you send Balogun out on loan, you get Balogun's new contract sorted out, you send him away from the club, you give him minutes and off he goes. What we've done now is we've given Balogun a new contract, which probably is unsettled in Ketty because he's sort of sitting there thinking, well, where's my new contract? We've we've kept them both. We've we've actively courted offers for, for Nketi all summer. We've agreed a deal with, with Palace. It looks like he's out the door. He then decides he wants more money. We can't sell him. And now we've got two players. And, and now we've got Balogun back playing for the under-23s when clearly he needs minutes. The earliest we can get him out on loan is January. But surely when they agree that new contract with Balogun, they would have said to him, new squad number, first team place, you're going to be third choice because we're selling in Katia. So I, I almost sort of feel like the club have, 
have let Eddie down a little bit because they must have made assurances to him. We're not going to offer you a new, a new contract because, you know, being transparent, we're looking, we're looking to let you move on. And I'm sure Eddie probably had those discussions with his agent and went, OK, fair enough. You know, I might not want to leave Arsenal, but I, I want to play football. So that agreement's all there. Then suddenly, much like the Xhaka situation, it's all change. Uh, and here you are. And I, I would not be at all surprised if Nketi got a new contract before the end of the season. But, so we crazy. can protect his family. It is crazy, and we've been like it for many years now. Where we've got these players, and we, we, you know, we either offer them new contracts and they refuse them because they want to see their contract out, mm. or they'll sign a new contract on big, big money. Um, don't really cut it, and they're sitting around really for two or three years on big money. You can't move them on because of their wages. Other teams are interested in them, and if we do move them on, we're paying half their wages at the other club. Yeah. Um, We've got to look at it that from top to toe. We've got, it, we've got a chat. We've got to raise the ceiling and mm. change the, the the way we we do our business because it's not right. You got, I mean, I look at teams like Leicester, and you know, even Wolves, um, the way they've gone about their business over the last few years because they seem to have, have got it right. You know, where they're they're picking off these players from all around Europe and they're bring them in and they'll they'll play them. And they're getting a they're getting a tune out of them, and they're all they're integrated into the team, and they they all know what they're doing. I, I look at Leicester, and they're much more organised than Arsenal. I look yeah. at Wolves, even now, I look at Wolves, and they're more organised than Arsenal. They're all right. They've lost a couple of players, and they it, 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 you know they've lost a little bit of sparkle uh, over the back end of last season and this season. But there's other teams as well. Look at Aston Villa, the way they've purchased, where they've bought players, and they've brought them on. You know, they've got a few good players in Aston Villa that, you know, that would probably get into our team. Right? Mm. And I, I think myself, then they haven't cost them a lot of money, but we seem to we seem to have a lot of these players that we've got on the books that are still running around. They've got hardly any games of football to play this year because we're not in the, you know, we're not in Europe anymore. So they're relying on getting games, those 25 players. Uh, they're relying on getting games in, in like the, the, this Carabao Cup or the FA Cup, and if not, they've got to play in the in, in the Premier League. Are they good enough? I don't know. But we've got to fundamentally look at the club, look at the way the structure is, and how we're we're signing these players, how much we're signing them for, what kind of money we're putting them on, you know, and the contracts and stuff like that, because it is it's just, it's all gone terribly wrong over the last five years. The players that we've let go for nothing top top players that we've left go for nothing uh, and even and the, the, we're left with the dead wood the, yeah. the players are not good enough at all. I mean listen I like Callum Chambers don't get me wrong he's not a right back for Arsenal no. Football Club if we're gonna if we've got any any aspirations of getting into the top four he is not a top four right back he's not even a right back why no. are we messing about right get rid of him for five million or whatever get rid of him get that stuff because you know when you've got them players hanging around in the dressing room they're just it's like a it's it's, it's like negativity that they bring in because they're not they've got they know they're not playing they know they're not Kalasinach and all those players look at all those players from, it's right from we've just shoveled out the door for free we're at the pay there we're at the council contracts right and pay them a load of money just to go mm. You know, and we've got to stop it. We've got, it's got to be stopped now. We've got to raise the ceiling. We need to be a proper football club. We, we haven't been a proper football club for the last three, four, five years, maybe more, you know? Yeah. So we've got to change it, and it's got to change now. Mikel's most probably trying to do that. You, you can you can see, you know, obviously he's, he's, he's man in management, but we'll most probably get onto that later on. I've, I've yeah. digressed. No, no, no. I, I think you make a good point. And the the only other thing I would mention on on the Inketia situation as well is, if you you got that you got that sort of decision to make because I hate to use them as an example, but I'm going to have to. Imagine being the guy that Spurs sign when they when you know that Harry Kane plays every week, that, and it's very hard to sign a, a striker who who is coming into the club who knows full well he's not going to play if Harry Kane plays. Or, you know, if you go to Chelsea, you're not going to play Lukaku plays. It's, it's a similar situation. You know, United, Ronaldo plays now. That's it. You know, imagine if you're Anthony Martial, how do you feel? So from that perspective, if you're going to say to Nketiah, look, if you're happy to be 
that backup striker, there's no issue there. But if Eddie wants to play, then you 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 know you can't just keep a player of that age because his value is only going to get is is either going to improve and get higher because he's playing games, or it's going to decrease because he's just not in the spotlight. Have we not? Wants to sign. Uh, have we not really seen enough of Eddie? Uh, it's not been a small sample. We've seen plenty of games, no. right? I think we've seen plenty of games of, of Eddie Nketia, and I honestly don't believe that you know he is the player, even as a backup, that he's mm. going to take us into the top four. Sixty-six games, fourteen goals. Well, wow. as no, a striker, that's, that's, as a striker, mm. that speaks for itself, Danny, doesn't it? You know, and yeah. I know this, you know he started a lot and he's come on a sub a lot, but I, I'm talking about even t- take all that away. I look at his, his his play, his football play. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think he's going to be a top striker in, in the Premier League, wherever he goes. I really he's, don't. he's in the Premier League. He's got five goals in 38 Premier League games, most of sub. Yeah. He's he's a finisher, but I don't think he's a footballer. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, I, I don't, 100%. 100%. I don't feel like yeah. he's got a huge all-round game. And and the best can, the best sort of comparison I can give not in literal life, but in terms of an Arsenal player. If you compare him to Nicholas Bentner, Bentner had his faults. We all know those. And if you haven't just read his book, there's hundreds of them that he himself mm. will tell you all about. It's a great book, by the way. Have it, have a read. Um, but he made he made an impact in most of the games he played in. Not always the most positive impact, but right. he was an alternative, different type of striker. And Ketty mm. feels a bit samey to me, and he doesn't. Yeah. If you if you've got twenty minutes to go and you're throwing on a you know a Benna or a, a Giroud, they're going to change the game for you and change the way you play. And Ketty is just yeah. going to come up and do the same thing that Martinelli does, that yeah. Aubameyang does, that Odegaard. He's the same type of player. It's not anything different, is it? So yeah, well, Benna, I, I don't know what the stats are, but I'm guessing that his his goal ratio was like one in two and a half. One goal in two and a half games, or something like that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. He that. did, yeah, he did score a lot of goals, a lot of important goals as well. But like you say, when he used to come on, you knew, you know, there was something about him, you know, and he, mm. he would, he would, he would, um, 45 and 171. Well, there you go. So, okay. what's that? Two yeah. and a half? I don't know. What is that? Yeah, it's maybe, about one in know. three, isn't it? Roughly, one in just three. over one in three. Yeah, okay, okay. which okay. is not bad, not bad for a guy yeah, to start many games. Not, no, that's right. Um, and he had some proper strikers that he was playing up against, you know what I'm saying yeah. to you, yeah. over the course of the time. Uh, but I don't know, Eddie. There's, there's a few players like that that we've, we've got to you've got to stick or twist on them mm. and then maybe go again, you know? It's a bit Carlos Vela, isn't it? You know, how long do you stick with the player before you go, do you know what, bit, it's not going to work? A bit Carlos Vela, yeah. You know, he'll most probably go to another club, um, grow up and, uh, you know, and... and be a good goal scorer for somebody, but I'm not. Yeah, Do you, uh, you know? It reminds me of as well. Tammy Abraham, you know, went went to Villa, found his level was brilliant. Never really cut it at Chelsea. That's gone, and albeit he's doing well at Roma, but wasn't quite capable of doing it at the, at the level Chelsea needed. But he was great for Villa. Yeah. What was, how... what was your What was your thinking when when Arsenal were interested in him, Chris? I wasn't a fan. I've, I've got to be honest. I just. Yeah. Probably a bit because it's Chelsea, and and I'm 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 I've got PTSD about Arsenal signing che- former Chelsea players. <laughs> it yeah. just doesn't fit oh, right. But yeah. for for me, there were better options. I I still liked, and I still like the idea, or I liked the idea of, of Edson Odwa before he went to Palace because I thought he was something a bit different for what was next to nothing. But if if you just want to play, I think Abraham's limited personally and he has had a good start at Roma and, and he may prove me wrong but I just felt there were better options we could have gone for and I still think there are better options that we will probably still go for because I guess the next big project which is a dangerous word to use on an Arsenal podcast but I guess the next project that we have having rebuilt the goalkeeping defending and to a large extent the midfield that striker decision if it's if Mikel is still around to make that cho- that choice or if Edu's still around that's a massive signing next because Alba's what 31 Lacazette realistically isn't going to be with us beyond this season uh, yeah. if indeed he doesn't go before in January you know I think Balogun's I think he's really talented but he's at least two years away from being a regular at least we've just discussed in Katia they have to make a proper marquee signing and I have a suspicion I don't know whether you think we might go down this route Jeff but I thought the Calvert-Lewin links were quite interesting in the summer I quite he like him. Quite, quite I like him. 
Mm. He's fantastic. You know what? What I like about him most is he's fantastic in the air. He's got yes. you know great We've missed that since Giroud, haven't we? He's, All he's, round. He's got he's got great aggression. He's got plenty yep. of pace. Uh, he can score a goal. But again, English. he comes. In, he, he's English, yeah. But he comes <laughs> into that bracket that. Um, is he is he the is he the is he the man that's going to get you into the into the top six or top four? Because mm. that's Arsenal are a football club now. Yeah. At the moment, we're looking to get into the top ten. Yeah, you know? <laughs> is he the make weight before the big? Yeah, I know what you mean. You, you know, so it, it is a tricky one, isn't it? We'll have to... I know it's I know it's a sort of a dangerous territory to go down again, but. I, I look at the squad we've got now and I wonder what a, a Van Persie type of player would do for us right now. If we had a, you know, when he was in his pomp, I do wonder if like, a technical forward who can score goals with, you know, yeah. with his feet and his head and the movement yeah. that goes with it. But they're not around, unfortunately. No, no that, they're not. That's, that's the problem. Very few and far between, unless you want to spend maybe 150, 200 million on Haaland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, good luck with that one. Good luck with that one. Yeah. Um Danny, anything you want to add on? I suspect I know the answer to this, but anything you want to add on Wimbledon before we go into sort of North London derby and questions? No. No, I didn't think Oh, that. apart from party plus starting, but yeah, what do you know? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have personally. It was a gamble. I think that team we um, started living was way too strong, wasn't it? I felt so. It, yeah. I would have loved to have seen the, the lad Patino, even if he made the bench. There's a lot of talk about him. I would have liked Ooh. to have seen a few fringe players play that game, really, but all we get from winning it is into the qualif qualification stage of the um, Europa Conference League. Yeah, but then to be honest with you, I I would take that. <laughs> I miss Europe already. I, I didn't. Oh, I wasn't God, sure I no. would, but I kind of do. Uh, not the conference or any. I just I just miss having games on a Thursday. I suppose. I just yeah. I think it's a lot more than that, Dan. I think uh, Mikel. I think he's definitely. He feels the pressure. Yeah. Uh, and he just needs wins on the record. He can't stat pad, can he? He can't have a midweek stat pad anymore. No, no, I, had a, no. I had a tweet ready to go um, at 1 0 saying, well, at least we've worked out that we can go back to the old Arsenal days of 1 0, and that's all we're ever going to win by. But uh, obviously, we went and ruined it by scoring two yeah. more goals. But Yeah, but I'll take that at the moment, Chris. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I think every, everyone's wilting, and we just, at the minute, we want to. You know, sustain it, get the consistency where we, we're not conceding many goals, but mm. we're scoring more than what we're conceding. Like George Graham well, used to say, Jeff, isn't it? St you start a good team by building from the back, from the back. goalkeeper, defence, and that's what that's what Arteta's doing. And we all we all know that we are conceding the inevitable Harry Kane penalty on Sunday, <laughs> so we're going to have to score at least two to win that game. So that that'll be fun. Um, Danny, which way round do you want to do this? Do you want to do? You want to do I was going to do kind of Jeff's corner and some questions. Do you want to do the two together or? I don't mind. I'm just looking. I just realised your logo, Jeff, says GA. You Someone only just realised that. that? Yeah. What, what, have you only just. Yeah. Come How on. long has it been like that? <laughs> for forever. forever. <laughs> only forever. <laughs> oh, it's a very good idea, Jeff. I like it. Who made it for you? Do you remember? I, I can't remember. Some it's terrible that I don't remember. Somebody on Twitter made me that, believe oh, it or not. Well, well done, whoever you let us know, and we'll uh, that was we'll... back in my heyday, Dan. No, no oh, one the... wants to make anything for me nowadays. The glory days, <laughs> the glory days. <laughs> oh, oh. See, I should have took it while I took it while I can. <laughs> Oh, that whichever order you want, Chris, it doesn't really. I'm fine with both. Really. Um, well, were you, you, is there any North London Derby question? How many questions have we had? Have we had hundreds or just a couple? <sighs> Those freeloading scumbags, as usual. At the moment, we have got uh, scroll up a little bit one, two, three, four, five. You've got one about strikers, one about our best 11, Stokes being a tit, uh, one we'll about. That. One about illegal streams and one about an asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, no, nothing None. really intelligent yeah. then. Okay, yeah. excellent. Uh, well, I, I mean, we, we can splice in. What was the one about the strikers? Did we answer that in our last little? Uh, um, it is from Matt or Roberts, uh, regular listener to the show. Hello, Matt. He says, uh, "What type of strikers would you like to see play for the club when both Nketia and Laka leave? They, their contracts end this summer, so they're mm -hmm. allowed to sign for any club they want outside of the Premier League on the first of January, which is four months away. Is it three or four months? And yeah. e.g., a tool or a fox in 
the box player. I think we have kind of covered that a little bit, but we 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 did. But we could. There is another question from Matt, isn't there? Which is probably more relevant about the North London Yeah, it didn't make sense. Oh. I couldn't make sense of it because he didn't so give where, an eleven. Where would you rate these North London derby teams? E.g., I, no, I think what he's saying is where would you rate the two teams that were that are going to be playing? Oh, the Sunday? current teams. Yeah, I think that's what he's oh, saying. Sorry, so, so the question <laughs> yeah. is, sorry, Matt, right. is, you know, you, you pay peanuts, you get Danny. Um, <laughs> ah. Where would you rate these North London derby teams? Uh, e.g., ten would be flying tackles, red cards galore, and lots of goals, and one would be they kiss and hug in the tunnel for points before the points are shared after a nil nil. Um, so let me ask you that one, Jeff. It's not a vintage Arsenal Spurs game, is it? I mean, they're they're all massive, important games, and, and of course, if we win, we're not going to give a shit who's on the pitch for us or them. But it's mm-hmm. it's not a crop of vintage 11s, is it? That are probably going to head out on Sunday. No, definitely not. Um, and, and I don't even know who's in the better form, really. No. Obviously, we're, we're, we're more or less even, aren't we, really? You know, no, they lost, to... they lost in the Premier League, Jeff. Then yeah. they drew in Europe, lost in the Premier League, and then they won in the League Cup, where we've won one in, one in the League Cup, one in the, two wins in the Premier League, and then one in the League Cup. So we're four straight wins, their win, draw, two losses. Yeah, that's coming off of a, a three defeats. So three defeats. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm glossing over that. Yeah, <laughs> that's just, in the aspect. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be able to do that, but I'm afraid we can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, you know that game at the game at the weekend. That's going to be it's going to be interesting because uh, personally, I think they're both. I think they're both going to be really, really scared to get beat. Uh, the two managers, believe it or not, I think I, I I even think that Nuno. I like Nuno, by the way. I think he's mm. a good manager. Um, uh, I, I think he's, he's he's under a little bit of pressure as well. That was a bit fortunate last night, Tottenham, wasn't they? Yeah. Uh, I watched the penalties and the uh, Wolves was just unbelievably rubbish at penalties. Um, so I think it's going to be a, a, a really tough, tricky old, tricky old North London derby where everyone's going to be scared to make a mistake. And it's really it's the first first team that makes the mistake. They've got to, they've got to capitalise on it and, and get a goal and I don't think there's going to be a lot of goals in it, uh, so it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a yeah. really really tough one. Well, yeah, how do you see it, Chris? I mean, I I haven't really given it a huge amount of thought because today's Thursday and it's usually around about the day before, the morning of the day before that I start going, ooh. This is a little bit, you know, it's the butterflies come in. Have they announced I, that Kane's out injured yet? The yeah, I'm sure that yet. I'm sure that'll be coming. Well, well, he's been out of form, hasn't he? So I'm sure he'll be just just bang at it by the time our game comes around. He scored the night, didn't he? I I don't know, Jeff. I, I I feel like we're playing him at a good time, but then that worries me in itself because everybody knows the old sort of form goes out the window, etc. And so on. I actually think it's a really important game for for Mikel because I feel like. Um, any sort of win, I feel like, buys him a lot of credit moving forwards. Yeah. Um, but I also think a performance is needed. Like, if we if we get... Do you remember the performance under Emery where we beat them? Was it 4-2 or 4-3, the Torreira goal? Um, and everybody was just brilliant in, in the rain, and it was fantastic. I think yeah. if you get a performance like that, you'll get the crowd behind him, um, the manager, and you get the crowd behind the players, and, and we'll be able to have bragging rights. And it, and it will... I think it'll inspire the players to to put in their best and and will take us forward momentum. You come out of that with a flat display and a you know one nil or two one loss, and I think all the pressure that has, I wouldn't say gone away, but there's less there's a less vocal, um, particularly on social media, there's less less vocal people about him, you know, about us not having faith in him, shall we say? I think that all comes back to the surface because I feel like. We all looked at these Norwich, um, Wimbledon, and and uh, and Burnley games, and I think anybody who's anybody expects us to win those games, arrogant or not. We just did, and and we did win them, but we we're, we're not convinced, are we? Let's be honest. No. Um, which will, will lead me to my next question to you in a minute, Jeff. But I feel like we need a performance, and I feel like we need to silence a few doubters. And if there's ever a game, I'm not saying we go balls to the wall and you know, go eight and attack and get caught on the counter-attack six times because that would be madness. We've got to be sensible how we play it. But we're the home team. You know, they're struggling. They've got a manager who's never been in a North London derby before. And, and we should be taking the game to them. I don't want to see us 
on our own turf sat there going, well, come on then, let's see what you've got and we'll try and pick you off. Like That's not the Arsenal that we should be. We should be going out and, and should be making a statement. And despite that awful start to the season, we beat them, what is it, by two clear goals, we go above them. So yeah. the same team that everybody was declaring is what was winter champions two weeks ago. So I mean, what, what we are going to see is whether we are a genuine a mid-table team because, um, mm. you, you know, a mid-table team, they do exactly how we've started with regard to... Yeah. Listen, Brentford's a, as a toss-up. You've got a new football team, a sort of new stadium. They come into the Premier League. It's their first game. They're playing at home. They're playing a big heavyweight like Arsenal. Right? It was set up that we get beat there. Right? Yeah. The way we got beat, that, that was the most disappointing thing. The Chelsea and the Man City game, I was disappointed against Chelsea because I think we could have spun them over. We we had a good record against them last year, right? And we just we, the Man City game, we just uh, chuck us crazy. He went, he went. I yeah. remember I used to say he's he's always thirty seconds away from a disaster, the lad, and that uh, he pulled it down again there, you know, after a, a decent Euros. So, so, so we got beat in those three games, right? But then we go on and we win the next three. Right, uh, that is what a mid-table team. But those three are against teams that are teams like you said that we should beat. Now we're playing a team that, you know, should be on form above us, and they are right. But they're struggling a little bit for confidence. We should now, if we're a proper team and we want to, if we've got any aspirations of getting out of mid-table fodder, we've got to be beating teams like Tottenham at home, right? Yep. Turning them over, and then we could jump them. You know, we could, and that take, like you said, it takes us on and everybody starts believing, oh, hold on a minute, we're a good side. You know, we can play football. We can beat good teams. You know, Tottenham, they'd won the league in July, don't forget. You know, <laughs> they'd, they'd won the league in July when they won three on the spin. Um, so, I mean, that's what you're going to find out this weekend, whether Arsenal are a team, or a genuine mid-table team or not. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I was listening to Football Week later on and they had Natasha Henry on there and they asked her um, sort of the question like um, sort of our Arsenal, our Arsenal, the, the team in form playing the team that are against form or, or is it Tottenham that, that are sort of the better team but maybe are out of form? And, and she sort of posed the question, well, aren't Tottenham just doing what Tottenham do? Like, <laughs> yeah. they're just flatter to deceive and, you know, everyone, yeah. just when they think they've cracked it, they go and lose three or four on the spin. And we're probably in the same washing machine as them at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm with you, Jeff. I just, I just think the, imp I just think the, the performance is, is so key because I, it leads me to, to one of the questions I wanted to ask Jeff. You, you've kind of touched on it already, but the um the style of play you've been lucky enough to watch some of the great teams under under george and certainly under arsene and whilst there were you know plenty of lows in those times as well as highs we can't forget yeah. the lows yeah it it was arsenal were everyone's second favorite team you know even in the days where we were the bad boys yeah. under george people loved us they were, we were the team of london yeah. um the identity that's that's the the question i'm going to pose to you mm. what what do we have to change? Like, is it is simply a case of Arteta just has to go, okay, lads, fine, go and play? Or or is it the players? Because I don't buy into this squad's not good enough thing. Nor do I. No, nor do I at all. I've already mentioned about what, on the touchline and how he's getting involved in the game. In my opinion, I think he gets involved too much. I think, you know, as a football manager, um, I, I think... You, you must trust your players. And he's had time now to get his own players in, right? So we can't say that, oh, he's, he's playing without somebody else's players now. He's he brought, I mean, since I last done a podcast with you, we might have had seven or eight players come in, you know? Mm. Um, now, that's a hell of a lot of players. But they're his players. He's brought yeah. them players in. And he's, he's trying to integrate them. He, he's, we've obviously gone from the, 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 the mode that we was in before into a, a, a new era now it's been reset and we want to go down that you know we want to buy young quality talent and and, and, and get them playing which I, I i can agree with but with that you know with these young kids you also do need proper experienced professionals to to keep them up 
Every now and again, you know, like the last 15 minutes against Burnley the other day, we was we were struggling a little bit. You need a, a couple of them like uh, defenders to 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 lift them up and just say, you know, it's just it's digging here for the next 15 minutes. Just not give anything away. Keep it nice and simple. Because some of them youngsters, sometimes they get carried away. They've not had the experience of playing, you know, all those games. And so it's, it's going to be very difficult for him because he's, he's, he's like learning on the job as well, isn't he? Don't forget. He's a manager now. He's not just a coach. He's a, he's a football manager. And it's all right being at Manchester City, you know, behind Pep Guardiola, probably arguably one of the best managers there ever, there's ever been, right? The, to taking on a, a task at Arsenal um, and landing in the deep end. And, you know, really, he's struggling with it, has struggled with it. So, it, but it's going to take us time. It's a, it's a learning curve. He's trying to integrate all these young kids. And like I said, I like it. But at the same time, we can't wait. Arsenal are a football team. We need results and we we, need, we demand results now. I would prefer that we do give him a chance, right? Let him do what he's doing. It's going to take another six months, maybe, before all those players that he has brought into the team know exactly what they're doing. And then you'll see whether or not he, he can cut it at the job, you know? Because what I don't want, which is why I was so against losing Arsene Wenger the way we did, was I didn't want this washing machine of managers coming in mm. for two or three years. He'll buy, he'll buy 150, 200, 300 million pounds worth of players. The new manager comes in, he'll want another 250 million pounds worth of players. And all you, it's just a, it's a washing machine. You're going round and round and round. We need, we need continuity. Definitely need continuity. And we might have to go through the hard yards first before we get there. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, 100% agree. And and Danny, um, next, I don't know if you've got them in front of you, but the next six fixtures, what do you want to see? I mean, obviously wins, of course, obviously. But mm. what do you want to see from those next sort of five to six fixtures, including the North London Derby? Because, you know, like I said, performance is key for me. But ultimately... If we don't perform on Sunday and we win one nil because the ball goes in off El Nene's ass in the ninety fifth minute, I don't give a monkey's. But if you gave me a choice, I'd rather us turn up and actually, you know, blaze them off the pitch. But it does it go deeper than just this one game for you? Does it go into those next four, five, six games? Because we need to put a run together, don't we, to to erase that thought of the three defeats again. Certainly do. Um I think what I'd want, the most important thing, I want Arteta to dress up as Russell Crowe from Gladiator, storm into the dressing room and in, in Latin say, bring me Harry Kane's head on a stick and then leave it at that and then just pat him on the arse as, as they as they leave the dressing room and say nothing else, just sit there in his Gladiator get up on, on the sideline, standing there looking angry, maybe have a shield and a sword, don't say anything, just intimidate everybody. And then as Harry Kane comes out, stares at him, stares him down and Harry Kane just melts in front of him because he can't can't cope with it. That's what I want. Harry Kane's head on a stick. Tell him that. That'll get him going. <laughs> but uh, it's the most important game of the season. First is Spurs at home. Second, Spurs away. After that, everything else is a bonus. Uh, so the other games we've got coming up, away to Brighton. Hello, Josh, if you're listening. Uh, <laughs> then we've got at home to Chris. This is just uh, all league games. At home to Palace, at home to Villa. And then uh, it leads at home in the League Cup, a good draw for us yet again, a um, home game. There's, uh, there's two in a row. And then we've got uh, Leicester away in the league. And then we've got Watford at home in the league. And then we've got a, a hard run of playing Liverpool away, Newcastle at home and Man United away. Or, or as I should call it, uh, Ronald, Ronald, Ronaldinho, Ronald, Ronald, Ronaldo. Ronald. Yeah, uh, all, those, back... all those all those games, Danny, that you've you've, you've just um, yeah, they they seem all very very tough games to me. They the do. Moment. Yeah, I was just thinking the same. Like you yeah. said twice Palace. in the show, Jeff, we're yeah. a mid table club. Pat Palace, Palace with the era. Yeah. Ah, oh, they just they just Leicester. seem very we out very of form tough. At the moment. Yeah. Very tough games now, and it's it's amazing that we we've fallen so so heavy. You know. <laughs> do do you both? Do you both agree with me that if we were to lose on Sunday, because you know we have to we have to consider that could happen. If we lose on Sunday, do you both agree that Arteta immediately goes back under the spotlight heavily, and that all that negative yeah. feel comes back instantly? Hundred percent, hundred percent. 
sadly. 100%, mm. definitely. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's I think it I think it's very easy for people and I I get some stick for this from from the, you know, the I've always been a positive fan, but I I will freely admit under Arteta I have been a little bit more negative because I haven't necessarily enjoyed some of the things I've watched. And that's coming from someone who loved him as a player. We, we've all said on this podcast from day one and will continue to say we want it to work. Like, I want him to prove me wrong. I want to I want to sit back at the end of the season when we finished, you know, second or third in the league and 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 scooped the honour of the Carabao Cup or whatever it might be and say, actually, do you know, what? I was completely wrong. He, he did have a plan. There was a process. The project was there. And I'm and I'm an idiot because I'm just a fan sat in my bedroom or whatever. But the you you don't have to be a negative fan to ask questions and be critical do you 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 can still Thierry Henry was a wonderful footballer but he still had flaws Patrick Vieira had flaws like every good player just like every great manager had has flaws and it doesn't make you a negative or a Arteta out to to criticize a manager I mean Jeff you must have had oh. moments where you criticized our son in the day you know you you yeah, like our but we all did, didn't we? There were days where he wouldn't, he wouldn't change, you know? What, what you're saying about Arteta, Chris, is I've been exactly the same, and I've, I've been getting a lot of stick on there about, you know, if I, if I criticise the team, and they, just the first thing they say, oh, you didn't say that under Arsenal. Yeah. I, I, but it, I could see, listen, we, we knew how Arsenal was playing back in the day. day. Yeah. We, we had an identity, right? We were trying to just outscore football teams, right? Mm. Most of the time we did it well but we had periods when we didn't. I remember the eight twos and the six nils at Chelsea and everything else Ooh. when it went wrong. But, you know, we had an identity. We still went out there. Even when we was five nil down, we were still trying to get up the pitch and score goals. Right? What I'm seeing from Mikel is at the moment, it's, it's, and I know it's, it's, it's the process and I do understand what he's trying to do there, but it's a very, very difficult watch. It's a different game we're watching now. It's, it's not, it's not very attractive sometimes. And if, you, if you're struggling or you're getting beat by teams that we used to wallop years and years ago, right, it's, it's a bitter pill to taste. But, you know, uh, we need – he needs to get an identity. He's, he's got to know his best team to start with. He's got to know his best formation. He's got to know his best tactics, uh, you know, and he's got to trust players. And I'm not sure he's got answers – to all of them questions at the moment. Yeah. yeah. How would you I, get I, us up for the game, Chris? Because being in management yourself for, for a few years, you know what you're talking about. So <laughs> That's debatable. You, so <laughs> how do you rate my, my gladiator scenario? Or, or would you have a, a more subtle way of doing it? Because a lot of it is going to be how the manager sets them up. Isn't mm. it? We, are, are we, are we going to come to the Zach? Are you saving the Zach situation? Oh, no, I, that, that's my next question for Jeff. So uh, keep, your, keep your powder dry. Well, I, I'd be, I'd be tempted to go down the Alex Ferguson route because, because Arteta is so, you know, he's so micromanaging and he's so overburdening with these instructions. Be, because that is his personality, and and, he, and I, I bet all the players will be expecting like a dossier of, of clips and videos and instructions. I'd be really tempted if I was him just to walk in on Sunday morning and go, lads, it's Tottenham. And then just walk out and just let them go and do what they can do. But, of course, in the modern game, you aren't going to be able to do that. I, I just, like Jeff said, I just want an identity. And I, I would love to, I would love, I'd love him to be in that dressing room before the game and say, look, look guys, you know, we've, we've got to be structured. We've got to be sensible. We've got to follow our runners. We can't jump into challenges. Don't let them wind you up because you know that's what they're going to do. When when Son inevitably throws himself to the floor, just laugh at the silly twat. Don't you know? Don't offer him a hand up. Don't fall into that trap of of, of letting the referee you know become the centre stage of the game. Go out there and just who is the ref? Oh, uh, some twat. Um, you can probably you can probably find out. It'll probably be Mike Dean or somebody horrendous. But um, I, I would be tempted for Mikel just to say, look, you know, I, I still want all the things I expect and all the things he would have discussed in training. But ultimately, in a derby, it is about who wants it more. It's that simple. And, and, and you can have all the tactical formations and tweaks you like. If you, are, if you want it more than the opposition in a derby game where a lot of rules go out the window, awesome. you, you know, you'll, you'll get the results. Your your question, Danny, was was what would you have to do? What you what have you got to do to to get the team up for for the weekend? Well, I, I'll tell yeah. you. If you're a player, if you're an Arsenal footballer, 
and you need to you need you need a pep talk to get you up against the uh, against yeah. Tottenham. You Great should point. not be anywhere near the football club. Great point, right? Because these these are one of the uh, Tottenham, Man United, Liverpool, Chelsea. Now those games you, you don't need to get up for. It should be inside you already. You just got to go out there and do your thing. Yeah, because we are going to have Ramsdale, Tommy Ashu, um, well, Ben White. I mean, um, yeah, ben White, yeah, so th- there's a few players there that won't have played in a. I don't think they've played in any massive derbies either. Uh, Brighton don't really have a Palace, uh, I suppose, is their derby. Palace, yeah. yeah, and yeah. Sheffield, when is it Sheffield United? The Sheffield Wednesday, they probably wouldn't have played them. And Tommy Ashu, Torino, isn't, isn't it? Uh, Lazio or Juventus, Juventus, isn't it? Uh, he was at Bologna. Uh, I don't know. Who's so it wouldn't have been Juventus then. <laughs> who, is, who is Bologna's derby? Is it? It's not Sampdoria, is it? Um, anyway, no. But yeah, I mean, tell me, Ashley, I wouldn't have any concerns about. He just strikes me as a guy who just gets on with it. He just strikes me as a really good professional who's who's quite talented. Um, ben White, I don't think Ben White strikes me as the sort of guy who thrives in those big games. He did at Leeds. I mean, he was a yeah. he was a leader there. Um, you know, I, I I feel like he will be fine. Um, he was getting a bit of stick for the Burnley game, and I think that was yeah. a little bit unfortunate, really. I, I yeah, don't I think did. He, you know, I, I don't think um, it was quite obvious that the Burnley was doing what they normally do. Like I say, leaving, not cutting the grass. So every, mm. when we were trying to play it across the turf, a lot of them passes were being held up. You see it in the final third, didn't you? Yeah. You know, but it's, 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 it's the price tag, isn't it, Jeff? Like that's the thing. As long as he's he's a fifty million pound defender, so the minute he even farts the wrong in the wrong direction, someone's yeah. going to be like, "Well, I wouldn't have farted like that." You know, it's yeah. it's one of those, isn't it? When you, I mean, who would you rather have? Uh, you know, a, a cultured sort of um, a cultured passing defender who who tries to play the game the right way, or a, a clogger yeah. like Tyron Mings, who just goes through the back of everyone week after week and, yeah. and is called, you know, heroic. Really? Like, that's not heroic. That's just brain dead. Like, it, well, Odegaard just... scored his only goal for Arsenal yeah. last season against Spurs when we beat him 2-1 at home. He so I he's... Hmm, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of cutting in and he, he slotted it under Loris and then ran off and did a knee slide and it was wonderful. But um, they've, they've, they've changed their style now as well, Tottenham, haven't they? So, massively. Uh, yeah, under yeah. Nuno, yeah. a lot of their supporters are a little bit disappointed in... in they're quite the dull. They're, yeah, they're quite dull. Yeah, um, and, and so so that would be interesting. I don't know. I think it, I mean it could be a like I say. I think they're both going to be terrified of losing. Why has yes. Josh added himself to the group? What group? Josh Hi, is there. Hello. Oh, he, I he's, snuck in the back door because I've been podcasting the south. He's uh, literally, literally going to run in. Look at yeah. that. What was what was that? What, with your girlfriend, you was having a podcast. No, I'm podcasting with. Uh, I thought it was some reader's wife squad. thing you were getting involved with, uh, in there, Josh. No, just with Kev Campbell, you know, casual, oh, crack knuckles. Yeah, yeah you know how it is. Josh, 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 as soon as we're talking about the good stuff, where were you for the rest of it? Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I I was doing I don't my own I, good stuff live. I don't want to upset you, Josh, but Kev told me I'm his favourite. So sorry about that. That's all right. He told me I was his favourite as well. I guess we're both stuck out. <laughs> oh, right, that's it. I'm going to pop with John Hartson. That's it. I'm done. Um, well, before, Sorry, Jeff, before I came we, in over top. Well, before we, we, we will bring Josh in, but before we do, I have to ask the nuclear question. Uh, I, I feel like we need sort of sound effects for this, Danny. It's a shame we don't have the production value. We've got flashing oh, lights for it. Well, that'll work. Um, so I'm going to ask you this, this question, Mr. Jeff Arsenal. Uh, talk to me about a certain Swiss gentleman. Um, would you or would you not put him back into the midfield on Sunday? Um, if you would, tell me why. And if you wouldn't, tell me why. I would. Um, I would. I would do exactly what Alex Ferguson would do, like you alluded to earlier on. Shoot um, him to Mars. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it is Tottenham, and everyone is going to be terribly disappointed if we get beat by them. Uh, and Chaka, he. He's played in many of those games. We've got a midfield Partey and maybe Lokonga. Who else is there? Odegaard. Maitland-Niles. Um, Maitland Probably not. Niles. I don't think Maitland-Niles. Um, anyway, I think you get the gist of it. Uh, 
I, I'm, I, listen, I know I don't like Chaka. You know that. I've, I've been very vocal uh, saying that he shouldn't be playing for Arsenal Football Club. He's not good enough. If we, again, got any aspirations of, of getting into the top eight even, right? I don't think he, he, he's that man. A lot of people think he's fantastic. I don't. It's a matter of opinion. Uh, but for this particular game, because he's had so many of them, he's very experienced. He, he's quite safe. As long as he can keep his head um, and... And, you know, just keep us ticking along nicely, which he can do. And we are going to need some protection in there. Uh, but I, I, what I don't want him doing is receiving the ball in front of the box, in front of our box from the goalkeeper. Yeah, or anywhere <laughs> not, near our box. Do not, do not, because he, he's, he's not very good. He, you know, he's not. He, and I think Tottenham, if they see he's playing, they will systematically make sure he is the one that is receiving the ball in front of the box. So he is the only one that will just leave the space where he is, right? Yep. And they'll work our back four so we're passing it to Chaka. And if he's got any sense, no, no, they'll say, let him get the ball. As soon as he gets the ball, bang, just just four of you go, just surround him because, yep. you know, you're going to nick it off him or something's going to something's going to occur. But... If you can keep him out of that, that in that midfield position, like there in front of the goal, and, and bypass him, then um, we. But I would play him. Then that is that's your ultimate question. So mm. I would play him just to safeguard, which is Fair crazy. Enough. Yeah. No. What Fair about enough. you, Josh, uh, Chris, and Josh? I, I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, I think I said all I need to say on him. So, Josh. <laughs> uh, I would say the benefit of us not being in Europe is the fact that there has been an extraordinarily large gap between the three games that Jack has missed. So if he did come straight back in, he wouldn't have played in a month. And I don't think it's a game where you take that kind of risk. I could see him coming on probably in, you know, the 60th minute or so when, you know, the Conga or Partey, you know, have run their hearts out in that midfield and the game's in a position where we just need to control it. You know, the game's got a bit slower. You don't need players who are not necessarily as sharp. Uh, but I don't think Xhaka really comes straight back in. I think it's a mistake from Mikel if that's the way he goes. Um, yeah. But many reasons. But one of it's those. amazing. It's, it's, uh, this is a, what I was talking about earlier on. It's, a, it's just a mental piece of business where we thought he was gone mm. from the yeah. football club. Hmm. Um, then all of a sudden he, he's come back in and he's, he's more or less first choice again. It's, it's, and we give him a, an extra year on his contract. Yeah. Uh, I, I think just, that's the big shame that we haven't had Sambi and Partey, haven't had the time together on the field during his absence yeah. to really strike up that proper partnership. It was yeah. only against Wimbledon last yeah. night. But, but Sambi strikes me as a sort of personality that that can do you remember what Kanduzi did against Villa that particular game I seem to remember and and indeed I think I think it was an also in the derby where he played very well. Um Sambi strikes me as a sort of character that you could throw into a big game like this and say just go and play. He doesn't he doesn't strike me as a kid who's gonna just hide away. Um I I, I feel like if you've got the right partner alongside him in, in parte, as long as and, and Erdegaard is disciplined enough and an international enough to know that if we're getting overrun he'll drop in between and make a three. I don't really see it. Saka and, and Smith Rowe potentially. I mean, I, I actually don't think both of those two will start. I think we'll probably. I've got a horrible feeling that the four three three that suddenly is working will be will be disassembled again on Sunday. And we'll be we'll be back to our defensive, uh, you know, shithousery style. But if if we do go with that, you, you would imagine Aubameyang picks himself. For me, Pepe and Odegaard pick themselves. It's then a straight shootout between Saka and Smith Rowe. You're probably going to go with Saka. And then it's just who do you play in front of the back four? And for me, I like you, Josh. I I wouldn't go back to Xhaka because I think it's, I think it's just a step back, isn't it? And and like I said earlier, when we're talking about Leno and and Ramsdale, if a player comes in at a club of our level and he performs and he does nothing wrong, he keeps the shirt. Xhaka, Xhaka is the reason Xhaka is not in the team right now. That's that's simple facts. If he doesn't get sent off against Man City, he's probably played all three of the last three games because Arteta clearly likes him. But he let us down that day. Mm. Not anybody else. He did. Well, he let us down. He stays out the side. That, that's Do, how I work it. No, knowing knowing um, uh, Arteta like you do, or you don't do, I don't know. <laughs> do you think... We chat every do you, night. <laughs> do, you, do you think Chaka, do you think Chaka is, is, would be first, first choice in his team 
if he had if he had the if he had the opportunity to go and purchase someone different you understand me um do, do you think he he sees checker as his go to man I, in, you know you, do you understand kind of worry I mean? that he might mm. i mean he, no, really? he's he's like the he's like the cockroach of north london isn't he, he just <laughs> survives <laughs> everything like well, well then i'd 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 be i'd i'd, I'd question Mikel arteta then if if that if that's how he wants to Keep we we, we had options, didn't we, Jeff? Like you, you probably know better than most, you know, about some of the contacts you would have. I'm sure would would have been in your ear over the summer about some of the players we looked at and and didn't go for. There there were five or six different options. I mean, the one that everyone bangs on about, uh, Joshua roll his eyes, Basuma is the one everyone talks about. Personally, having seen what I saw of him at Leo, I don't. I personally wouldn't. You know, I, I get why he's very good at Brighton, but that's just my opinion. You had Hussein Moua, who was available for, for next to nothing from Leon, who's a, a different type of player, but gives you more creativity alongside a, a Partey type of player. Although, let's not forget, Partey's not a defensive midfielder. He's a an all-round box-to-box midfielder. Um, we were looking at Locatelli, which was never, ever going to happen. He was always going to stay in Italy. So we were obviously in the market for somebody, um, but that right player didn't come up. If you... I guess if you said to Mikel, you can have a, a Kante or a Fernandinho or a... I can't really think of any others, really. But Rodri. Those, those oh, well. he'd Rodri. Snap, yeah, he'd yeah. snap your hand off for a Tiago yeah. or a Rodri over yeah. the yeah. top of him. Or um, even a Wijnaldum, you know, when he left. Mm. I mean, you know, a Dries Gay, like Somebody like that. You, you, I mean, like you said, Jeff, I, th- I think if, if he isn't thinking that way, then there's something very wrong. Because the Shaka that plays for Switzerland is a different player. But the Jacket that plays for Switzerland has, you know, has that that team's built around him. He is the focal point of that Swiss side. Uh, at Arsenal, he, he he's he should be a squad player at best for us. I've never, I've just never thought he was good enough to be honest. Just never have. Hundred percent, exactly. And you know, people people do bang on about his his his, his performances for the Swiss team, but you know, international football is totally different. Yeah. Most decent Premier League teams will yeah. be any. Mm. What, uh, yeah, any international team, you know. Yeah. So and how and how well did he really do at the Euros? When you look at yeah, the, no, right. the opposition, and, and you, you know he played a he played it very well against France, who who threw that game away. Let's not forget France were three one up and cruising, and they threw that away. You know, I just yeah, I just I just think that we should have moved on when we had the opportunity. We didn't. We are where we are. As long as he's got the shirt, we'll always support him. Yeah. That doesn't mean that we, that doesn't mean we can't harbor aspirations for better. That's how I would put it. Yeah, I think where, you know, the situation in the summer was, I think we're better with Jacker than we are with an empty seat in the dugout. In yeah. That yeah, regard. That's fair. Um, yeah. I, Although at least the empty yeah. seat doesn't get sent off. But... That's true. And, but it's and already. To be honest, to stand. <laughs> and to be honest, and, and fair yeah. play to the lad, he is he is very very committed to the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you him know, that. Yeah, he's he certainly. Yeah, but he's bought into it, and he knows yeah. his role, and and you know he's he, he's grasped to it, and uh, yeah. he's not he's not sitting on the sidelines like like Meza and a few of the others that yeah. once they was put on the side that they, you know they, it was a waste okay, of time having yeah. around the place. I mean, we can even look, you know, against you know North London rivals. They've got a player who basically had one maybe half a shattered ankle out of the door. At that mm-hmm. point, has come back in and has co- looked completely disinterested yeah. in wanting to play for him. I know he's going to turn up at the weekend because that's how Sod's Law works, yeah. and it's yeah. the only game he's getting ready for. But yeah, yeah. but I he also, and he also, benefit. and he also, to be fair to Jacko, he might not have changed my mind or Jeff's, but he, he changed a lot of people's minds. You know, <laughs> this is a not guy that people I, hated. Yeah. Not not me either. The minute that, yeah. I mean, I was done with him before that Palace game. Yeah. Was it the Palace game? The, the, the armband. Yeah. But, but that that was what sealed it for me. I was like, now nah, this this isn't an Arsenal player. This I, guy needs to needs I to think be. If gone. we knew that Sambi was going to come in and make the impact he has done, mm. perhaps Jacker was let go. But I think no one really knew what a kid from Belgium. You know, he's playing at you know, an all right standard with Andalex, played a couple of Champions League games as well, but we didn't know mm. what he was going to be like when he came in. Maybe in January that gets revisited. The one thing that Mikel has got is, I know we talk about how similar he is to Pep, but also how similar he is to David Moyes. He's very loyal to the starting eleven, yeah. As in the starting eleven that played the last game, if it didn't go wrong, 
don't expect to see many tweaks. Um, I that's hope you're the right, thing Sunday. that. Yeah, uh, I, of course, there's always the opportunity for Mikko in a big game to go full big brain and think oh, about Pat. what he could go. Exactly. And that's where, yeah. you know, how you mentioned about maybe it's just Partey sitting in the middle and Odegaard and Smith Rowe yeah. are the two in midfield. And then you've got Saka and Pepe and Aubameyang yeah. as the uh, the forward line. But it's going to be really interesting. And I think it's for a long time we can go in and be positive about all of the particular options. You know, we can if we do want to kind of, you know, reopen the wound and pour some salt and vinegar in it, we can talk about Granite Xhaka. But even with Granite Xhaka to the side and thinking maybe he's still suspended, the options we've got in that midfield are really exciting for us now. We haven't been able to say that for maybe, what, four, five seasons? Mm. Uh, certainly since Wenger's left, maybe last season of, or first season of Emery, we were talking about midfield options. But yeah. this season, we're going, OK, are we going with just Partey? And then Smith Rowe and uh, Odegaard, or as you say, is it Sambi comes in? Maybe Maitland Niles comes in to bring in a bit of kind of dynamism in the midfield. It won't give us much in terms of passing, but he'll get around the field. Yeah. It's that's one of the promising things about this squad now is how exciting it is. Yeah, true that. Yeah. Let's um we've got about five minutes, I guess, to rattle through some questions. Um Josh, seen as you've Seeing as you popped in, uh, why don't why don't you take us through the best of the rest? I think we we did a cut. We did the two Mike Roberts ones, didn't we? But you can go through the other ones for us by all means. No problem at all. Yeah, sorry, listeners, if you were hoping for a Josh Free show, but you know, hadn't been on for a while, <laughs> and uh, the back someone left the back door open. Uh, blame him, not me. Uh, but yeah, Chris, first question for you uh, from uh, Chris Nilsson. When Arsenal have their strongest. 11 all fit what position would you then say is our weakest compared to the other top four teams hmm. you're not allowed to say dug out yeah damn uh, <laughs> manager. All that, yeah same thing um yeah. i'm torn between midfield and forward hmm. between the between which all the other top 10 teams top four hmm. top, top four, four. I'd say midfield then, because actually, if if you actually look at the top four, there aren't many that there aren't many brilliant strikers in the Premier League anymore, are there? The the era of the striker is a little bit behind us, um, so I'd say midfield. No, I wouldn't even add any more to that. Just say midfield. Fair. Uh, question for Jeff. Then we we'll work our way down. Uh, oh, do you want a f stupid one from Stokes or a <laughs> not stupid one? from crack, Guna crack, and Seven. Crack away, Josh. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with the stupid take over the stupid one. So from uh, Jar uh, James Rao Stokes. Uh when you can oh when can your listeners expect the first episode of uh so Jock and his pudding podcast. We've provisionally named it Nude Pudding Pudding Enthusiasts and we've got our eyes on a particular scrumptious apple strudel for the debut episode. So I think it was a follow-up question or supplementary question. Favourite dessert, Jeff? Uh, yeah. What am I? I'm an, uh, I'm an apple pie and custard, me, mate. Ooh. Like a bit Ooh. of apple pie and custard. A little bit of cinnamon uh, on top as well. No, nah, you know what? I'm not a panzer for cinnamon. That's the normal. Okay. If I have, if I have any apple pie with cinnamon, it's going. I won't eat it. Not for me. All right. All for right. Me. Make sure I'm near you when you've got one, and I can see the cinnamon bits in it because I'll come and take it right up from you. Yeah. <laughs> but we were, we were thinking, Josh. Um, I said in the beginning of the show that rather than doing the ABW live shows where we discuss the last Arsenal game. You suggested doing a Great British Bake Off live where after the show where we, we all discuss the what we thought about the show. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm sad to see that you got kicked off. That was you on it, wasn't it? <laughs> there were some very I mean, similarities. I know I'm not far away with my hairline, but I think I would have given up the ghost by that point. Oh, I'm, I was uh, more about, on about that he's opaque. Oh, yeah. And no, tall. We, we've had a lot going on. Yes. Down. That's what we're um, do. Yeah. Uh, no, it was a very, it was a shame that I didn't make it through week one, but I will go back to selling model railways to very odd people. To grown uh, men who should know better. <laughs> yeah, possibly. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. They're doing other things otherwise. I'd be looking under their patios if they weren't collecting trains. Um, Chris, 
question from Guna N7 for you. Uh, how did the armchair fans cope without their illegal streams? And should more people go to games? Tickets were and are easily available from Arsenal. I'm the worst. I'm the worst person to ask this question to because I, I fucking hate streams. So <laughs> I, I review. I've always refused to watch streams. I just I. I hate that delay that you get, you know, where you know something's happened and you're waiting for it to happen. Um, I was listening to, I think it was the Footballistically pod, where they, I think Boyd was saying he does what I do, where if he ever watches streams, you know, he'll watch like the, he listen to the live feed, like on Radio 5 or whatever. And then if something actually happens that he needs to look into, then he will, he'll go and look at the stream to see what happened. That makes sense afterwards. But no, I, I, I don't like streams. And to be honest, I would rather miss a game than watch it on a stream. Um, it's TV or nothing for me. And as for going to the games, t- the turnout was nice last night. It was good. Um, you know, a lot of good people. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm even dragging myself to a game in, in October with uh, the, the, the legend that is Mr. Davies. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's unfortunately it's not it's not easy to get to games if you are either on a low wage or you live miles away like i do it's not easy to get to rent to, to many games so when you do go make the most of it uh and i know i know there was a lad who got a lot of stick wasn't there for from um from a lot of different sources about him filming his trip over in his first time and you know it's not my cup of tea having your phone out for the whole game and that but if that's how you want to do it you do you you know and, i think and, Sorry, Chris, I beg your pardon. No, no, you carry on. I thought you were done there, mate. Danny's kindly given me the official attendance for last night, and I think it was a genuine official attendance. There's 56,000 fans right now. That That's bloody good, isn't it? phenomenal for mm. a situation that we're in, right? Mm. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cold Wednesday night. Oh, that wasn't that cold, of course. But <laughs> you play, you play, you're not playing the best team in the world. I mean, it's not real Madrid to turned up at your doorstep. You understand me? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a carrier bag cup. That's a fantastic uh, – that, see, that, that effort there really answers the question. There's plenty of people there, and they got involved. All right, there was cheap tickets and everything else, but that, that's, that's, that's a fantastic figure, that 56,000. I think they've done well. God, God bless them. Mm, absolutely yeah all right so no streams for me josh thank you no streams for you and yeah i think it was uh it was nice seeing twitter being so quiet for an evening during an arsenal game you could just about two hours you could relax and go about your business after everyone was going where's the stream where's the stream and (laughs) presumably someone trying to navigate chinese pay-per-view tv to sign up and then get a couple of thousand views for the rest of the evening but anyway uh and on to our I think no, we've got two more questions. Uh, oh, who's got the best knowledge of Spanish? I reckon Jeff's a real travelled man, so I think maybe he knows Spanish. So I'll ask Chris uh, this one in a sec. I'll go this one for you though, Jeff, uh, from our friend uh, Rich Cactus Cash. Why does the Spanish language have masculine and feminine words for things like the and at? It is really taking the fun out of learning a new language. Although, although I've been to Spain many, many times, I, I, I didn't take on the language. So you are definitely asking the wrong person, mate. That's all right. Um, maybe <laughs> I'll, I'll have to go for this. I'll, I'll leave the, I fancy Danny's the man for Spanish. I was maybe. just thinking I just that. Talk louder and point more. <laughs> <laughs> such a new answer. <laughs> really I've never been to Spain. Last time I went abroad was the Champions League final. Never again. I mean, oh, they're not always that bad. And you don't always have to go to France. I think that's right. the uh, that's the main benefit. French is also very similar because it has masculine and feminine pronouns. But not for and the and a. Ah. But like, no, no. I, yeah, Spain is I can very agree. I can agree with you, Rich, because I've also tried to learn Spanish um, for an impending trip to Mexico. And yes, it's not the easiest language to go. So I'll go with taco por favor, and that will get me around most of the streets. I think uh, at least get me fed. Uh, and actually, I'm going to ask this one to Danny, the final question, because I know he loves space. Um, from El Comandante, have you seen the footage of the asteroid that impacted Jupiter last week? I imagine it was, it was very, like someone throwing a Rice Krispie at you. It was very much uh, like a, a Poundland fireworks display. It was uh, probably a very large asteroid, and it's a good job that the, the Jupiter was there because it's the shield for all the inner planets. And all the big things hit that and don't hit us. So thank you, Jupiter. I did see it, yes. 
for for us still being here and yes. that well actually, actually jupiter get out of the way next time the human race needs to be uh, wiped <laughs> out the uh, the universe and do the rest of the universe a favor because quite frankly the ones in charge are ourselves <laughs> all right well that concludes the questions and almost the end of my uh, gate crashing excellent uh, i guess that sort of leaves me to kind of start to um to to put the cat out and, and pull in the bins for the weekend um yeah so i the only thing I, I would really ask is if anybody has any nudges or or mentions um what about predictions we don't do predictions anymore do we is that still no, a thing just, just, it's just curious no i'm going one nil I, I don't want to predict i think we win that's all i'm going to predict yeah I just I don't want to jinx anything, and I am a massive jinx. Uh, Josh, you can't say anything either because you we all know you and John are massive jinxes. But he's so. Mystic Josh. He has insight. Oh yeah, no. Once in a blue moon, or once a year, I get a prediction so right it hurts. Um, <laughs> so I'll go with three one to the Arsenal and Martinelli hat trick. Ha! <laughs> the last time he was in form was 2019. That's not happening. If, if, if that happens, same for Mystic Josh. If that happens, I will I will walk to Josh's house and plant a very big kiss on his head. Okay. So yeah, the, you heard it here first. I'll Come get a box on. out for him. <laughs> <laughs> I fancy it will be either nil nil or one one. I found I must admit I do fancy a draw. I've got to be honest, as I think like you said earlier on, Jeff, didn't you? The, the idea that um, both teams don't want to lose, do they? So I I can I certainly agree with you. I think it might be one of those kg miserable affairs um let's hope i'm wrong you know let, let, let's hope we're wrong but all um, the ones who give penalties away hopefully jack will be there mustafi's gone um who else is it holding and chambers aren't going to get a look in yeah but it doesn't doesn't matter like we we know we know it's know coming. Do it. uh, you know a, a cane tumble or in fact no you know you know we've we've seen kane and son recently you know who's who's due one that twat who looks like a homeless bloke in their midfield now Deli Ali, he's, oh. he's he's the next one that's, that his legs are going to conveniently go from beneath him in, in and around the penalty area. You know it's coming, so th let's not fight the inevitable. Let's give him the one goal head start and then be. Pawson is Pawson is the ref. Is he any good? Craig Paul, oh, he's not the best. He's a bit. He's a bit. You is know, like Australian you, lad. Is that him? The Australian don't think, is he Australian? No, he, he's, he's playing another fixture. Craig Paul, uh, the other Australian guy. The best way I can describe Craig Pawson is he reminds me of I'm just going to be crude. I don't care. You know, when you sort of, you know, you need a wank, but you can't really be bothered. Jesus has gone there. And you just and it's just a bit limp. And you, you sort of, you know, it's, it's there, but you're not really invested in it. That's what his refereeing's like. It is not consistent. It's not you can't hang your hat on it, literally. <laughs> and it's, it's just a bit limp. So. There you go. That, we've, done, we've done really well to keep it highbrow, and I thought I felt the need to just relegate it down to, you know, the ABW oh, that you that. all know and love. Eh? Good. Well, you've yeah, managed that. I'm good. I'm pleased. I'm done. My work here is done. Uh, so, gentlemen's nods. Uh, Danny, there's no point me asking you because you never got one. Uh, Josh, seen as you arrived late, I'll do you first, uh, if you pardon Thank the expression. You. Hey, <laughs> do you have anybody you wish to mention? Uh, oh. Excellent question. Uh, oh, my normally. I guess it's your mate Kevin Campbell, is it? Oh, I was going to go. It was the top of my head. I was like, oh, maybe I'll go my mate Kevin Campbell. Did you start uh, a fight yeah, with him this time? Squad. Uh, no, I didn't start a fight with him this time. Um, I've they've got a yellow and red card system, and let's just say I've got a record akin to Flamini uh, on that <laughs> program. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but I was like, check the hybrid squad out. Um, yeah, I've got a soapbox on there as well, so people can always uh find that as well and give it a listen. Some and they got a guy on there who talks, who knows his stuff on French football, he's excellent, I've heard. So, uh, yeah, Kevin Campbell, <laughs> he, he watches it every week. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, good shout, good shout. Um, oh, I do have a shout out. To, oh, to Lionel Messi. <laughs> <laughs> so so did Poch because he wouldn't actually high five him. All he got to do was shout at him. Bless him. What the hell has happened there? It's hilarious. Uh, it's early days. It's early days. To be fair, um, Jeff, have you got any? But I have a suspicion I might know who you might be going for here. But I will let you indulge. I, I have. I've got a shout out as happens to a, a chap, a Swiss guy that's uh, uh, become a client of mine. 
I've met him on Twitter. Um, Can you say Jacker? I'm going to have to leave. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 you know what? I hope he's not going to have to hunt with me about how I've, I've, I've battered his, his, his compatriot um, this, this, this evening. But um, his handle is M O E Z K I L I C. His name's Mikhail. He's he's a he's an amazing football fan, and there's been a lot put on Twitter about uh, these uh, fans and everything else. Now this guy's a football fan. I'll tell you why he's a football fan because he he's been to nine top flight football games in ten days. He saw he saw the he saw he saw uh, Liverpool, Man United. Uh, sorry, Liverpool. Um, who do they play? He's seen Liverpool, Liverpool Leeds, right? Mm. He's seen Aston Villa, Everton. He watched Man United, West Ham. Uh, he, he watched nine games in 10 days. Now that, to me, I doff my cap because, and he's, he's, he's a really, really nice gentleman as well. So he should be followed on Twitter because he, he loves his football, if it's nothing cool. else. Do you know what? I think he's an Arsenal supporter. I don't Goodness. know. I never, never ventured into it. But um, have to go elsewhere it, for quality he, football. <laughs> he's cl- he's clearly a football fan. So you know, and what I mean that, that's the, that's a bucket list type of thing, isn't it? Where if you're so madly in love with football, you can go to nine. You know, he, he won the, uh, the Man City Champions League game in the week when they won. Was it five? Did they? Yeah, they played. Where did they play? Um, Didn't they win six 0 in the League Cup? He went. He, no, no, he didn't watch that game. Who did they play in the Champions League at home? Leipzig. Oh, Leipzig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was five yeah. three, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, he went to the Chelsea game as well. Chelsea. I think at the Bridge. Right. It's, oh, nice. all top flight games. And the last one he went to was was a uh, good game uh, at the London Stadium, West Ham versus Manchester United. So you see, all had the top teams. Brilliant. Brilliant Fantastic. stuff. I'm, I'm massively going to bring the <laughs> massively going to bring the tone down now. I feel like I should have gone first. I'll try and find a happy thing to end on, but um, I think it would be remiss for, for us not to give a a, a parting uh, nod to uh, the late John Chalice. Um, just mm. he obviously uh, we're we're one gooner down as of last week. Um, for, just for anybody, you know, as as a man, as an actor, um, as a personality. Anybody, I'm sure Jeff and, and Danny certainly are. I'm sure even you as well, Josh, you're not much younger than me. Brilliant. Only Fools and Horses mm-hmm. was was my thing as a kid. And it's still to this day, I've gone back and listened. I've got an audio book of like the episodes, but in audio format. And they still hold up now. And sure, some of the references are a little bit um, questionable in the modern era and a bit dated. <laughs> but, you know, that character of, of Boise and, and just what a, a gent John Chalice was. He was one of those actors who, uh, you know, he played a character, but yet when you hear you hear the man John Chalice speak, completely different, you know, so, so polite and so well-spoken and just completely opposite to the, the crafty Cockney he would have perceived on screen. So, um, yeah, very sad to, to lose him, uh, one of our own, if you will. Um, and the only other sort of slight downside to, to, to mention to you is the, the story of um, Sabina Nessa that, that has... I, I think it's gone under the radar in terms of that there's a lot of high profile crimes that have happened in the past year and some horrific stories. There's the, the lady who's just whose body's been found in America, Gabby Petito, I think she's called. Oh, some really horrific that. cases. Yeah. No, the and, caravan. And it, she went around the, the caravan. Around the caravan. Yeah. But, but Sabina's Very case has gone, has gone a little bit under the radar. And I think, you know, this is this is a lady who had the whole life ahead of her and, and it's immensely talented and when it's on your doorstep a little bit and, and it, you know, the, the, the person who's the perpetrator is still at large, just feel like sometimes these things are not, you know, that because they're not sort of in the public eye too much or they're not brought up as public things. Just think it's it's kind of a good time to remind everybody just to be safe. Like the winter is coming in and, uh, well, I say winter, it's technically autumn first, isn't it? I'm not convinced autumn's really a thing. But the nights are getting, are getting darker and, yes, oh, we're... Right. Uh, we're, we're, we're out of lockdown at least for now until we all go back in in three weeks time um but no in all seriousness you know crime is a real thing and you know i'm sure jeff you can speak of, of being say particularly in the city the size of london but anywhere where you live just just look after each other and uh keep your wits about you because there's some pretty horrible people out there and, and any of course anyone that's going to the game on sunday you know tempers are going to be um rife potentially just just keep an eye 
to, to yourself and, and your mate next to you and just look after each other. It's it's a pretty shitty world out there. So, um, yeah, I, I need to find something to bring us all back up again. Um, let me think about what I can bring up again. Uh, I've talked about wanking. Let's not go there again. Uh, Danny, why don't you tell us what exciting things we've got coming up on ABW? Because I think, did you do the um, the the special book review in the end? Or are you still in the process of recording that one? I fobbed that off onto Jockman because I don't like reading. So oh, there's a there's a WhatsApp there's a Twitter group with Darren Darren Berry and uh, and uh, Jock and Jock's going to do it. He sent him the stuff to read and then Jock said, "Yeah, I'll do that." Excellent. So look forward to that in 2026. What have we got coming up the rest of this year? Bugger all. <laughs> Bugger all. They're giving up. The only people, time people turn up is when they, we label it emergency podcast. Then they come in their droves, nearly six thousand views. Oh, we this will probably to, get about six hundred. No, they only want drama, Chris. So unless you're gonna gonna finish this off by uh, uh, no, this this will get mad. This will get mad views. You know, GA's back in the house. You're here. Josh has has invited himself on because you know he's that big time these days. I mean, we're literally a Ellis away from a full house. So good. You know, this all this will get mad views. But um, I've got we another. Could end it on of... a, a double Lord bombshell that uh, Raj and Ellis are now lords. They've got their yeah. own land. They are both lords. So we're Raj, I'm, with those again. Raj, I'm fine with Ellis. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't go well. Well, we'll end on this note. Um, we need to wrap this up because somebody on this podcast who's going to re remain nameless uh, wants to watch Married at First Sight. Isn't that right, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, it's very, <laughs> very true. I don't know whether or not you've watched it, but it's very, very funny. Very, very, um, very if, funny. It won't surprise you to know, Jeff. I've never watched no. it. I no, probably no. never will. You know but, uh, but I was the same as you, Chris. Right until we watched, we watched the Australian one first, and it was so funny. We we we, we, we tried the the British one. That's equally as funny. Maybe <laughs> maybe I'm missing out. Maybe I'll, I'll give it a go. But uh, when I get bored of banging my head against the wall playing the new FIFA, I might give it a, give it a, a crack. But uh, Jeff, it's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you very much for uh, for coming back on. Um, don't leave it so long next time. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, look forward to seeing you in, in a few weeks' time at, at Villa, maybe. Oh, always a pleasure. And hopefully, yeah, definitely, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you there, mate. No problem. And uh, thanks for having me, gents. Thank you very much. You know, very Cheers, welcome, Jeff. Jeff. Thanking you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Josh, you didn't have to be here, but you were here anyway. So uh, thank you very much for, for popping by and basically just plugging yourself. Well, what can I say? <laughs> it's what they're all here for. You can catch me plugging myself on my only fans as well. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Is there feet pics or anything? Just, just... Oh, only if I get the camera angle wrong. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, speaking of feet pics, uh, Danny, I mean, you have to be here. Nobody needs to see anything to do with you and the words only in fans. So please don't ever go down that route. Uh, yeah. But thanks for pressing all of our buttons and, and for inviting me on. It's a pleasure as always. It was, it's a joy. Thanks for hosting. You are very welcome. So uh, the, all it remains for me to say then is uh, this has been a Bergkamp Wonderland uh, an Arsenal podcast. We will remain an Arsenal podcast. We will get behind the boys as they trot out on Sunday. And let's not forget, at the end of the day, when all is said and done, lads, it's Tottenham. Danny, shut this shit off. <laughs>